Hello, everyone, and welcome to the St. Peter's live stream of our first but not last space adventure. Over the last couple of months, the St. Peter's students have been working on a scientific journey of inquiry, guided by the questions, can we reach space? And what, can, what information can we collect in the process? All of this has led us to this very moment today, where in just half an hour, we will see the launch of the St. Peter's High Altitude Balloon. We're, we're streaming into you today live from Seros. And I'm joined here by a great team that uh, from the Year 10 who will talk to you a bit later more about the project itself. Before we continue, we would like to say a big thank you to the Everest team, the Habcat 2021 community for all of their guidance and support throughout this project. Ms. Amari would ex like to extend his gratitude to David and Oscar for all of their help throughout the project. But I would like to say a big thank you to Mr. Maori because without him, we wouldn't be here today. Uh, the year 10s have embarked on a journey which evoked many engineering questions that they had to resolve under the guidance of their teacher and mentor, Mr. Maori. Today, the helium altitude balloon that you will see, the balloon was designed and developed by the year 10s who are with us here today. A great feat for their age. Um, however, I do have to mention the primary students had a part in all of this. A big hello to all the primary students following along back at St. Peter's. Uh, those of you who may have seen on our social media, the primary students were involved in the first phases of our altitude, high altitude balloon program, where the year fours and fives used the scientific method to figure out how many balloons we need to lift up a certain weight. We use party balloons filled with helium to lift um, an Arduino and other sensors, which we did back in Barcelona. In the first phases, uh, the, the students were involved in setting it up. However, today in our project that we have, our complete high altitude balloon that we plan to reach 27,000 meters into the sky, uh, the, the Primary students are with us in scientific spirit because they have all developed their own experiments that they have added into the box. In our box that you will see later, there are little test tubes. Each class has selected something that they want to test and see that what will be the effects of the, the spherical conditions. We have with us seeds, we have uh, even bouncy balls, quail eggs, and we even have bacteria. Uh, so, all in all, in this project, we have two main goals. So, of course, one of them is here today where we do plan to launch our balloon, hopefully successfully. Uh, while the balloon is in the air, we hope to capture pictures of the curvature of the Earth. I'm personally very excited for these pictures. And the second phase will be to retrieve the balloon once it comes down with the, using the GPS. Once we get back to school, our year fours and fives will be able to open up the box and see what effects the stratosphere has had on their experiment tubes. However, I need to mention we do have a greater goal for this whole program. This program has been developed to give our students the opportunity to develop their STEM skills, to develop their critical thinking and their scientific knowledge. And all of this is being done with the goal to de develop the next generation of innovators. Right now, I'm surrounded by a great team of boys. Hopefully in the generations to come, there will be even more students involved and I hope to see some girls on the field as well. Uh, we will continue to develop and enhance our space program. Again, hopefully with the community of St. Peter's involved, all of you watching, feel free to write in and tell us your feedback. And uh, just to summarize, I'm going to go over the achievements we've had so far and what we hope to achieve today. So in the first phase, uh, in the helium balloons, the party balloons that the year fours and fives were involved in, we managed to use 110 liters of helium to lift 75 grams 
which was made of the technological devices and all the sensors. And we reached a height of three, around 300 meters. In this phase, in the trial phase, we had a limitation of the height because the balloon was attached to a fishing rod. That was our method of bringing the balloons back. However, today we're flying free. The balloon is not attached to anything. It has a parachute and we hope once it reaches the predicted 27,000 meters of altitude that it, the balloon will pop due to the low pressure in the air and guided by the parachute will come back down. We have tracked where the balloon will potentially fall and using the GPS we hope to pinpoint the, the position in which it will land. Um, today we will be lifting 3,000 grams or three kilograms and we hope to do so with 546 liters of helium which is nearly five times more than what we did in the first experiment. Now, I know you're very excited to see what's going on. I'm going to pass it off to the year 10s. Before we do that, they're going to give you a quick tour of the environment we found ourselves in and why we are here. Uh, I hope you enjoy watching and see you later. So here, here, here we are in Cerros. Uh, sadly, we couldn't launch the balloon in the Barcelona because it is near the airport airport and we cannot launch it near the planes. And here you see uh, the team is making the final preparations before the launch and in a few minutes we'll be starting the launch. Okay, over to the year 10s. So good morning everyone. Uh, this is Alvaro and I'm Sasha, and now we are going to explain to you a bit more about the sensors and how the balloon works. So, Alvaro, would you like to start? Yes, of course. So, the main piece of this experiment is in the balloon, which is the half sonda, which right now you can see Alex working on it. And, well, it is mainly composed by sensors unique control and actuators. So the sensors are a camera, which of course it's needed to locate, well, its function is to make a picture of the Earth's curvature, because as you all know, the Earth is a sphere that, well, we all know it. Then we also have the GPS, which you can see right here. Thanks, Alex. And it is used, well, to locate the balloon at any time and, well, where it is, because we want to uh, know where the balloon is, to so later on get it back and see the information. We also have the LoRa, which is for, well, to send information from the hub sonda that will be up in the sky to the hub antenna, which I will explain later on the hub antenna. We also have the MPU sensor, which is detecting the speed, the acceleration, and the inclination of the balloon. Like that, like that. Then we also have the BMP 180, which is a sensor that detects the temperature, the pressure, and the altitude of the balloon. We also have, we also have the Dallas, which is also detecting the temperature, but in more accurate uh, parameters, because we want to know like it's a real experiment, really important, and we want to know like exact uh, parameters. And finally, we have the antenna, which uh, it helps the GPS because of course the GPS doesn't have. If this system fails, well. As you know, and you all know, everything can fail, nothing is perfect. And in case something fails or everything fails, we have auxiliary system. So we have a plan B in case plan A doesn't work. So inside the box, we put an Arduino Nano, which is not actually a computer. It's a microcontroller. And thanks to it, uh, we are capable of measuring magnitudes such as altitude, pressure, and temperature. Uh, um, but sadly, 
we are doing a nano is not capable of sending the data live as we planned, but when we recover the balloon, we can get the SD card, which is in the Arduino Nano. And if we put the SD card in the computer, we can see all the data that was collected. In addition to this, uh, we have other auxiliary systems, such as uh, another GPS. So we have uh, one GPS in the box, but it will be put another one in case the first one doesn't work. And as you may know, the GPS uh, is very important because uh, to track the balloon, uh, we need a GPS, and without it, we will not know where's the balloon. Uh, so the GPS looks like uh, the first one is very small, but the second one is bigger. And uh, by using a phone, an application in a phone, we can easily track and know where the balloon will land and where is it. Um, as Alvaro mentioned before, we have two cameras uh, in the thermal box, and they will. Uh, film the surrounding area and what will happen. But the cameras can fail as well. They can malfunction because of low temperatures or anything can happen. So in that case, we put another camera uh, just in case it is more protected. It can stand lower temperature. And in case the first two fail, uh, it will film. So the hubs on the module is inside the thermal box. This is where it comes from there, inside. Uh, we put it inside the thermal box so that we can stand uh, low uh, temperatures because, as you may know, in the space, the temperatures are quite low. And as Miss Sarah already mentioned before, uh, we are planning uh, that the flight will last about 90 minutes, so one and a half hours. And we hope that the balloon reaches an altitude of 27 kilometers or 27,000 meters. So uh, when we launch the balloon, the half sonda will pass the, all the data collected, such as uh, pressure, altitude, and temperature, to the half antenna. So you may wonder, what is a half antenna? Alvaro, can you explain us what is a half antenna and how it works? Yes, of course. So as I said before, the half sonda needs to send directly information or data to the half antenna, which will be here on Earth. So how does it work, you may ask? It's really easy. We will have in the half sonda and in the half antenna, each one, a LoRa, which will send the information directly and in real time uh, to the half antenna here in Earth. So what does it mean? Basically, in other words, while the balloon is up getting all of the data, the temperature, the pressure, the altitude, the acceleration, all of that things, we will be able from here down in Earth to directly get that information instead of waiting for the balloon to come down, get it back, and look at uh, what the information has gathered. Like that, it's more easier to get the information and much more faster in case the balloon is lost or something similar. So right now you can see the balloon is being filled up with um, helium, which of course the helium, what it does, well, it's a gas that will make the balloon and the Hudson that go up. And when the pressure is very low and that balloon will be ginormous, it will explode and it will come down. But with precaution, we have added a parachute and safety measures for everything. And that's it. The technical part is finished. Thanks a lot, Sasha, for helping me on this. And we hope you like the launch. So, boys, how are you feeling, all of you, today, with all your hard work coming so, to fruition? We are feeling very excited. Obviously, I have worked a lot on this uh, project. We have spent a lot of hours working on it and preparing, the, uh, preparing for this day. Uh, we faced a lot of difficulties and problems, but as a team, we will solve them. And hopefully today, everything will uh, work correctly. And let's hope the balloon can fly and then we can recover to see how what the what data we could collect. Excellent. What are you most excited for, Alvaro? I am most excited for, well, the balloon to work because the, we have been dedicating and working really hard to to see this. Very, a lot of months working on it, and we hope it works. 
I am very happy today. Uh, well, the sky is blue. We have a nice climate, 30 degrees. So I think, well, I hope for it to work because as Sasha told, told before, we have uh, put a lot of work in it, a lot of passion also. And well, I hope it works. That's it. And what have been some challenges you've had so far? Well, uh, we faced a lot of problems and challenges. Um, first of all, uh, not all the sensors work, and uh, we had to fix some of them, even we had to buy new ones. Also, uh, the programming part was quite difficult, and we had to ask for help from uh, from a company that helps us. And, well, putting everything in a thermal box was also quite challenging because we have a lot of cables, as you can see before. As you could see before, we had a lot of cables, and some of them disconnected, and if one disconnects, uh, the sensor will automatically not work. So. This was quite challenging. And also last Monday, we had a really big problem. Basically, uh, all of the system, the hub sonda, didn't work. And we were very scared. And, like, we had a lot of questions why, but we worked really hard. We, thanks to the teachers also, because they let us some of the hours of other classes, for example, Catalan, French, and many others, to work on it. And, well, the last test was that it worked fine. And let's go, it, it works. But that was the challenge we had. Excellent, thank you. Alex, can you tell us what you're doing right now? Uh, I'm seeing uh, uh, the weight of the, of the balloon, so because it has to be maximum one kilo, 500 grams. And if it's more than that, it's good, mm. like, don't fly. So we have to be, we have to look at the weight because it has to be very accurate. And that's it. Excellent. And let's hear from the man behind the balloon, Mr. Maori. How are you feeling? I'm really surprised. That's the best day of my life. So right now we are securing the, the balloon and we are just uh, introducing the whole stadium. So it's impressive. It's impressive. If you can take a look, so it's huge, as you can see. And it's like to have a, you know, to have a little baby that, yeah, yeah it's just born, born right now. So, yeah, I'm excited and uh, I have no more comments because, yeah. Great. So let's make the countdown begin. Uh, not now, huh? not now. Later. Okay. So then back to the securing phase. Yeah. <laughs> we still have to secure the balloon. So while we wait for the balloon to be filled, we have 20 more minutes approximately until the launch time. Uh, we will use this time to go to Mr. Jordi, the founder and owner of the school, to hear how he is feeling about this project today. Not the 20 minutes. <laughs> Everyone is very excited here, really. They had the problem with electronics, but still happens to solve it, so everything is fine. Last adjustments and last minutes were ready and I hope everyone is very excited at home watching us. The weather is lovely and I think it's a great day for the experiment. It's a great benefit for the school. Do we plan to continue with these projects in the future with the school? Well, we're speaking now of next year having a rocket maybe, which would be the next step for this project and I think it sounds very exciting. So we keep doing this kind of thing here. Very, very amusing. Definitely. Thank you, Mr. Jordi. You're welcome.
Okay, let's hear a little bit more from Sasha and Alvaro about their experience with the primary students. So, obviously, we couldn't do this balloon alone. Uh, Mr. Maori, our uh, teacher, tells us alone as well. Uh, the community every tells us as we the project also tells us alone, and they tell us uh, tells us solve some difficulties with us. And as well, it was really interesting working with um, the primary students from year five. Um, they were doing the experiments, some experiments and some investigations about uh, how space and, and, and stratosphere and uh, which effects it has on some uh, bacteria, for example. And some of their ideas were really interesting. Really interesting. Uh, well, I think that. But you said is everything correct, but of course we couldn't do this balloon without exactly knowing what we were doing. And for that, well, as I explained, we did like a little balloon at school with the primary uh, student, which was similar to this, but as uh, as Sarah as Sarah explained before, much uh, like better. Like the altitude were only 500 meters, the liters about 100 liters of helium, things like that, but at least we had an idea on our head of what the big project was going to be, and well, we were able to do this, uh, let's say, easily, in an easier way. Excellent, thank you. Let's hear from the rest of the year 10s. How are you feeling, boys? What are you doing right now? Can you tell the viewers back at home what you're doing? Alex, you got no, no, no. Okay. Uh, we are weighing everything. Ah, uh, you're still in the weighing process. And I yeah. see you have a camera. What is your task today? I think pictures. Okay. To the balloon, to everyone. So then I edit it and I move it. Why do you think it's important to record this day? For the history. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. How about you say that? So the, the balloon is, as you can see, really, really big right now. And we had some estimation in when it's up on the stratosphere at 27 kilometers from the Earth's uh, surface. It will expand between three or five times more. Um, well, you can imagine how big it will be. They keep on putting helium, and well, then it will become the process, will commence the process of putting the hot sonda in the balloon, tight it very well, and the launch, which we are all waiting for. But of course, we need time to prepare. Can you tell us more how you're going to secure the balloon to the box? What so is the plan? Our idea, we have some holes in the box to put a really, really, really strong growth, similar to the experiment we did with the primary student, the little one. But, um, uh, well, yeah, with stronger growth. And what we will do, they will attach something at the end of the balloon, which later uh, it will have the metallic uh, rope to put it uh, in the hole of the, of the box of the half sonda and we thought, well, we don't know. It, it needs to be very secure and very tight, and it would be fine. Everything would be fine. Excellent. Let's see the balloon.
We're joined here by Aka. Aka, how are you feeling? I'm feeling like I think now because in I think half an hour we're gonna fly the the balloon and then I'm going to control the drone and write to the balloon in order to film it like in the air. And we we have been preparing this for months and I think it is a very fun project. It is final time to, to try it out. What has been the greatest lesson for you so far? Well, I learned a lot of the programming and also like assembling the each part of the you know, the electric clips, which is very fun and I learned a lot from So you had fun learning. Yes. And so today you're the drone master. Have you ever flown a drone before? Yes, but it was years ago. So I have to I have learned another time and well it is very good for a drone. So are you practicing right now for yes. the drone? Okay, excellent. Thank you. Okay, Alex, what are we doing right now? Uh, we're closing this roll and we're going to attach it to the parachute so we can secure the parachute to the box. What is this rope for? Uh, for the parachute. Ah, to attach everything. Yes. So how have you decided to make it this length? Uh, he told me. Who told you? Uh, Oscar. Oscar, okay. Yes, the professionals yes. told you this is yes, the yes. desired length. Well, but, uh, Mr. Mami gave me a presentation uh, where... Like, well, this was explained, and like, we had all the measurements and everything. But uh, he was the creator from, from the present of the presentation. Okay, excellent. I'll let you work. Thank you. So, as you can see right now, the balloon here on Earth is in its full size. But remember that this in space, well, while the pressure, while the balloon goes up, the pressure will be reduced and it will expand a lot more. And, I don't know, it will become ginormous. Do you want to stand next to it for comparison? Yes. We're a little bit in the way. We're touching the balloon right now. It's very impressive. Quite bigger than the party balloons we used in the first phase. Right, primary? Yes.
de dañar al globo amb lo que sea, la punta del globo con eso. A lo que va a En que está el globus no es una mirada. Si sí, 30 se me invita a la gente ya, no pasa. Vale. ¿Y ahora? ¿Qué ha hecho el eso? Sí. Uf, está surdín ya. Vale. Vale. ¡Oh! Otra brida, rápido. Brida, 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 brida. No, que esta no. Que la liamos. ¿Pon? Aquí. ¿Aquí no? Sí. Y a multísima malayer. Vale. Talla, talla run. Vale. Puedes apretar que está brida, ¿eh? Lo que pasa es que estás en cinta y llana. No, 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 sí, sí, te cinta y llana toda. Vale. No, con. Sí, están acá. Cuidado, tranquilo, vale. No dañas los globos, ¿no? No, no, van a no, no, van a escapar. Vale, si te fijas, cuando hemos ver, no se ha escapado Leli. Leli, todo Leli está en presión para apoyar, por eso no se escapa para nosotros. Vale. Ahora, yo aguanto capa aquí, ¿vale? Y. Tres vueltas sobre eso. Vale, vale preparé cinta y llan, una cinta y llan, algún otro preparé una cinta y llan. Vale, aguanta para la punta de abajo de todo ahora. De salir a Spy también para que la de pusar aquí al. Aquí. No me sale el que pudiste, ¿sabes? Sí. Está saliendo un par de vueltas. Vale, stop, que puesto en K. Una abrida mes. No, no, no. Vale, una aquí el Mitch. Sí, aperta Ford, muy Ford. Vale, aguanta, aguanta el final de la abrida para que no marche con él. Exacto, es importante eso. Muy bien, y ahora estén la corda a 3 metros. Solo la tenéis. Vale, has de hacer aquí un nus marine. Sí, alrededor. Alrededor. Sí, sí, estoy que aquí. Vale. Después, a la parte que ya tengo una brida, al que parece, pasaré en el coll de los globos para sobre. Vale. Ahora, brida y apretemos aquest nus. Si la puedes pusar la brida aquí en diagonal, para que agafe mis trozos del globo. Así, no Vale, ¿allá? Vale, y ahora, último pas, ¿allá de aquí? Sin que irán también. No, para falta. ¿No? ¿Deja de sanar? ¿Deja? Una brida y luego hacer. Una punta de abrida no te funciona. Ah, oh, merda. Otra abrida. Sí, una otra. Bueno, no sé, esta no se puede poder cerrar. ¿O sí? ¿Sí se puede cerrar? Sí. Por venga, aprieta, fuerte. Fuerte, 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 fuerte. ¿Una otra abrida o una mujer? Venga, corta. Otra o una mujer. Yo pienso que no ran. So. Vale, pues lo tenemos todo listo. Caja, ¿no? Vale. Caja, ordenador. Ahora, la caja, empezad a... Bueno, dadme tiempo a mí que tengo que programarme en la otra antena, que no he tenido tiempo, ¿de acuerdo? Que alguien se quede aquí aguantando esto, para que no baile. ¿Vale? Y me voy a programar la antena. ¿Vale? 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 ¿Vale
They tell me to get close. Eh, Arduino Nano conectado, batería, ¿sabéis cuál es el VIN? Es lo que ¿Al cuatro yo da, Liker aguanta a un lobo? Tenía en cuenta que está hasta... Falta... Can you tell the people at home what we're doing right now? What is the phase win? So right now we are going to check if the electronics and programming uh, is working well, just to ensure that we have communication with the balloon. In addition to this, we will we will uh, put the, another uh, electronic board into the cars, just to track the position of the balloons, and also to the to make sure all the data goes to the Amazon server, and actually. Uh, if we are able to to track the balloon with the GPS, with a website, that actually we can send you the website link just to see where the balloon goes. Perfect. So we're getting closer and closer to the launch. Yes. Excellent. So do you have a question for me? <laughs> oh, well, um, how do you feel when we told you that you are going to participate in this experiment? So it's been a pleasure working with Mr. Maori, seeing the things that the year 10s do. It's amazing. Um, it's been exciting for the year 4s and 5s as well to have at least a little bit of a touch in this project and to have uh, the opportunity to collaborate with the year 10s but also to see what is waiting for them in the years to come and i know the year fours and fives are capable of so much i don't know if any of them are watching right now but uh, again a big hello to all of them and i'm sure after this screening this streaming they'll, they'll have plenty of ideas i hope this whole opportunity will get their creative juices going and they'll start to think about other possible projects that they want to maybe start up in the school thank you okay Gracias. 
Okay, while we're setting up here, we're going to go over here and see the second box. Boys, why do you have a second box with you? Uh, here we have a second box. Uh, we prepared it because we thought that there there's a chance that something will happen to this box. It will break or something will mount, uh, won't will work correctly. Yeah, mount. So we decided to make a second box. They didn't put any sensors inside it, but if something happens to this one in maybe 10 or 15 minutes, we can change everything from there to here. Can you tell us a little bit more about the box? So this is a replica of the one that's going to go to space. What does it have on the outside and why did you choose this material? Well, can I explain it? Yeah, sure. So this material is made for it to keep warm, which the real box also has it, because of course, at high, well, one, when the balloon is going up to the stratosphere, it, it is against freezing temperatures and it needs to be protected because if not, all of the electronic devices and um, sensors, everything fail because it cannot uh, support so much freezing temperatures. So this is uh, specialized for it to maintain the inside hot and to, have, and to not have any problems. Excellent reply, but I see that you've chosen a styrofoam box why is that sorry i see that the box is made out of styrofoam this white uh, material yeah. why have you chosen styrofoam well first of all uh, it doesn't weigh a lot and um, when we did the project and um, they told us that each gram matters because the more it weighs the less it will rise so this material is very light and as well it protects uh, the box from the uh, freezing temperatures. Yes. Um, so yeah, this is the main reason why we chose it. Okay, and what have you done to secure the box? So I heard that you were doing some 3D printing. Uh, yes, we did a lot of 3D printing. Um, well, we used an app uh, from the internet to be able to uh, recreate in it uh, models of 3D printing like boxes or a screw like for the screwdrivers for it to be well attached and we print them with uh, plastic which in Mr. Maudi's class we dispose of machines which can print uh, 3D plastic things but whatever you want you can print them and thanks to that we, are, we were able to make the box like more resistant and uh, like able for it to go up to the stratosphere. Excellent. Uh, I see that we have some people commenting right now. If uh, anyone would like to ask any questions, feel free to do so. We see in the stream, not everyone. So those of you who are you. in the stream yard, we can see your comments. You and YouTube, we have a second device. So if you would like to ask any questions, we do have a little bit of delay, but that's the way science works. Uh, it's the first time we're doing it. The boys are setting it up as fast as they can. Thank you for all of you for your patience while we set it up. We're still very excited for the countdown to start. We're not there yet. So as I said, if you have any questions, feel free to send them in in the chats of YouTube and StreamYard. We'll be looking at them now. Okay, we have a question from Year Two. Thank you, Year Two, for your question. Sasha's going to answer. I'm going to come a bit closer so you can hear him. So the question is, how cold will it be? So the answer is uh, 
we expect that the temperature uh, when we are when the balloon will be at 27 kilometers, the temperature will be around minus 25 degrees Celsius, but it can be even more colder. I, I think more or less until minus 40, minus 45, but we expect minus 25, so more or less there. Uh, another question is uh, what type of camera we are using? We are using uh, uh, three cameras uh, similar to GoPro cameras. Uh, they are not so expensive, uh, but uh, they work the same way. And Why that, did you choose these cameras? Well, um, we read about them and the quality of these cameras are qual quite good. Also, uh, they, 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 can, they, don't, they don't get affected so much by the temperature, so they work uh, perfectly uh, in minus 20 degrees, for example. Also, they don't wait a lot. So they are quite light uh, compared to other cameras. And, and the last reason is that they, they are not very expensive. And in case, for example, if they break or one falls, so yeah, we don't lose a lot of money. Excellent. We have a question coming in from Mr. Paul, our STEM teacher. I imagine he is with a class. How will the balloon come down? Can you explain it again, Alvaro? Yes. Alvaro. So when the balloon finally pops because of the low pressure uh, in the stratosphere, basically it will eject a parachute and the box will be falling for a long time, of course, but with a parachute for it to be able to land softly and not like a meteorite. So everything is very well calculated. And I have also seen another question, which is how did we manage to get this really big balloon from Albert Pamplona? And basically uh, the company Everest is really well prepared for these type of experiments. And they had it like in their stock of, because they do a lot of things like this. And thanks to them, we have this great and um, big balloon. So, uh, we have another question from Antonio Cese, Alvaro's brother. So the question is, what exactly are you trying to ach achieve with this promising project? So as you may know, uh, humans have been exploring space for the uh, past uh, 60 years, um, even more. And obviously, big companies build um, rockets and satellites to launch in the space, but they cost a lot of money, millions and millions. And with this project, project we are trying to achieve uh, and find a way of exploring space, well, near the space stratosphere, uh, with uh, not so not so high budget because we didn't spend a lot of money on this. Whereas companies such as NASA spend millions and millions to launch satellites, and that's it. Um, we have a question about the box. Does the material reflect UV solar rays? Um, yes, it does. Yes. Okay, and year four, Ms. Rashida's class is asking, will we be able to see the balloon from school? Um, sadly, we won't be able to see the balloon from the school because uh, we are far away. We are near uh, Ledvita, uh, which is two hours, two and a half let's say ours from Barcelona in car. So it's not that big, so it's quite small. So no, you won't be able to see it. Can we repeat, and maybe some people joined a bit later, can we repeat why we have chosen this location so far from school? Well, because obviously in Barce uh, our school is located in Barcelona. And as you may know, Barcelona, there's a big airport in Barcelona and a lot of planes are landing and taking uh, of uh, near there and if we launch the balloon there there's maybe a chance that we hit a plane or something but in this um, place there's no planes no helicopters so the, nothing the balloon won't hit anything excellent and year three is asking will the box break when it returns a very good question yeah well, it is expected not to break because as i told before we have a parachute for it to land softly uh, because if it breaks, um, all of the electronic components may also break. And of course, we need them. There's money in it. And we have worked uh, really hard on it. So it is not expected to break. And there's another question. How long do we expect to fly? Well, 
the flight to take. It is it is expected to take 90 minutes in total, uh, one hour and a half. Um, the majority of the time, it will be raised, uh, going up to the stratosphere, and then I think it will be 30, half an hour or 40 minutes falling down. And that's it. So year three is asking, why is the balloon so big? Well, uh, let's just check. It's still big. Yeah, it's very big. So the reason why it is so big is because obviously we are lifting weight and uh, we need a big balloon and a lot of jelly inside so that it can fly. If it was small, it wouldn't even lift up. But because it's so big, it can reach higher altitudes. And this one will reach about 27 kilometers. So the more helium we have, the more power we have to lift up our box, which is quite bigger than what the year fours and fives had to lift. Let's see our box again. It's still in one piece. Getting ready to be attached. Okay, thank you, year three. We have a question from year nine. How fast will it travel? Well, it will be going up at around five meters per second. So this is quite fast. Um, Five meters per second in kilometers per hour. Uh, oh. We need a moment to do the calculations, yeah. Year 9. Or maybe you could help us out and calculate it. Yeah. That's Please right. feel free I... to convert five meters per second into the chat, Year 9. Oh, we have a calculation from Leo Martin. 18 kilometers per hour. We will have to check that. Thank you, Leo. Uh, I saw we have a question from Miss Sylvia's class, year three, the Spanish class. They're asking how many minutes until it reaches the target location? Well, the, and where does it plan to land? Sorry, from Alfonso. Alfonso. Okay. So the minutes are, as I told before, 90 minutes. And uh, it is well. We have uh, added a link for all the teachers to look at, where they can predict. It is called Predict Hub. Hub is high altitude pressure balloon, and it will. It's a website which will predict uh, where the balloon is going to pop and also land. But what we have seen is that it will uh, fly above uh, Yeda, the city, and it will land uh, about 20 kilometers away from our position right now yeah so there's a link sent to all the teachers you can open it up with all it's already set up you just need to click the link so maybe the classes you want to see where the predicted landing area is and we will see once it lands we will see how correct the prediction was uh, we have more questions coming in boys from Claudia what will you do if the balloon pops before it should what will we do uh, well, if it pops before, and this may happen, uh, it will land. It will just land in a, another place, not very far away, but it, the, the final landing spot will change. So we'll, by having the GPS in the phone, we will look where it will land, and we will just go and collect it. Yes, Claudia, that's an excellent question. Maybe you saw that everyone is wearing gloves. Mr. Maori, can you tell us why they're wearing gloves? Or Alex, maybe, can you tell us why they're wearing gloves, uh, latex yes. gloves while touching because the balloon? The balloon is very thin, and if we touch it with the with the bare hands with no gloves, like it, there's a risk of popping the balloon, so we have to be protected. So, Claudia, we're doing all we can to keep the balloon safe and sound until it reaches its target. Um, oh, Miss, Miss Sonia's class has a question. How much did the balloon cost? 200, 200 euros approximately. 200 euros. 200 euros. So it's a quite expensive party balloon, but it's worth yeah, it for this science balloon, yeah. science experiment yeah. today. Uh, Gerard, how many minutes will it be flying? We've mentioned this several times. So let's repeat one more time for the audience back at home. 90 minutes. 90 minutes, all included for the 
uh, ascent and descent. Boys, do you know what will be faster, the ascent going up or the descent going down? Ascent. Why is that? Uh, well, because as the balloon ascends, um, basically it will expand, and of course it will have a uh, like much more force, and uh, it, it is expected to go five meters per second which is actually 180 kilometers per hour, which is really, really, really fast. And with a parachute, it will go much lower because as you can imagine, if it drops faster than 180 kilometers per hour, which is the Aston, uh, the box will crash and everything will get destroyed. So that's it. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Maori, you have a shout out from Miss Sonia's class from the Shining Stars. Go, Mr. Maori. Hello, Shining Stars. How are you? I hope you are really good. And part of this project is dedicated for you because you did this amazing project about the moon camp. Also, to, to do these new technologies and these new developments that we will see in the future. So, hopefully, uh, we won't arrive to the moon, but we will arrive to the stratosphere. And let's say that's the second layer to go to space. And you did a great job doing the project. And I hope you join, uh, hopefully, in the next few years. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Maori. We have a question. The estimated time of launching, what is it right now? So I think, more or less, we will launch in less than 10 minutes, Ooh. hopefully. And we are just checking all the systems. Because usually in space, uh, because of the cosmic radiation, for instance, just to give you an idea, if you have one system, you have no system. If you have one system and then you have the backup, then you have half of a system. So it means that you need a lot of backups, you need a lot of systems, you need to make sure that everything should be at least with one backup or two backups. We have good news of the GPS, it's working right now. It didn't. So yeah, so that's the most important thing while doing technologies that they, they are going to be in one chaotic system, yeah, let's say a complex chaotic system. So in other words, it means that you know nothing about this environment. So the sky, it's really difficult to predict. And yeah, the, the example is maybe tomorrow, you no, know, the TV says that it's going to rain and then suddenly there is sun. Why is that? Because it's very difficult to predict. So we have been doing a lot of predictions and mostly every day, the predictions were different. So the best people in the world is developing uh, these technologies just to make sure that everything works at that time. And I think that's the, the most beautiful thing about technology. So when you know how it works and all the effort that you have to do to, to make it work, then all, all the hours that we invest, everything, it really pays off for this beautiful moment and this beautiful project. Thank you, Mr. Ari. Thank you. We'll let you get working so we get to the launch. Uh, we have another question, boys, if you would like to answer. Someone is asking, if it fails, will you try this again? I think Mr. Maori kind of mentioned all the measures you've taken mm -hmm. to avoid it failing. Yes. Maybe could you reiterate a little bit? Well, uh, we obviously hope that it won't fail. The experiment won't fail and everything will work fine. But of course, there's a chance that it fails. Yeah. Sadly, uh, this is our last week in robotics, so we won't have another opportunity to do it. But uh, if it fails, then uh, the people that are now in Cartofeso or uh, younger um, boys and girls, when they reach Fort Feso, they can repeat the experiment and see if it will be successful. And um, we mentioned that uh, the speed will be 180 kilometers per hour, but uh, we made a small mistake in the calculations, and actually Leo was right, it's 18 kilometers per hour. Well done, Leo. You should join the team. Yeah. Uh, we have a question coming in from Albert. Are you planning on improving the balloon for next year, for example, by trying to make it waterproof? An excellent question. Well, as we already mentioned, this is our last week in robotics, and next year we are not doing robotics. But, uh, for example, if your nine students could try to improve the balloon and everything next year. for next year when they are in your tent. And also, they will learn, well, Mr. Murray will tell them all the mistakes we made, and they can try and uh, avoid them. 
and make the experiment even more successful and interesting. You're breaking the ice, but I'm sure yeah. you'll be great mentors for the generations to come. <laughs> okay, uh, we have a question from Gerard. How big is the balloon? I don't think we've measured the balloon, but I can say I would fit six year four students inside. Oh, Maybe man, more? Man. <laughs> no, I don't know. In the meters, how big do you think the balloon is, Mr. Maori? So the diameter I, I would could say, be... I would say, yeah, I would say more or less, imagine to, to fill up a big uh, bottle of 600 liters, more or less. So, so as you can see, like, let's say, yeah, I would say four people. If you take, like, four people, like, could you come with me? Yeah, of course. Sasha? One um, more. Three? We have a human balloon. Yeah, that could be, that could be more, of a, more or less the, the volume. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, Carlos, Mr. Carlos is asking, how long did it take you to prepare the project? Boys, how long have you been working on this project? Uh, a lot of time. We started at the, in September, at the start of the year. Uh, no, no, no. January. Oh, sorry. January. January, January sorry, because sorry. we started robotics in January. Yeah, so. More than a half. Like yeah. more than six months yeah out of work and hours mr mauri you've been working on this even longer yeah right? yeah yeah uh actually i i lose the the counter about the how many hours so yeah basically after the school working a lot and a sleepless nights lots of excitement but also hard work so right now just i think this is the top part of the iceberg so one thing that I want to tell you right now, you are able to track the balloon. Okay, so we are going to send you the website, and you you have to be patient because it's not the Google Maps; it's our own uh, website. So go to the website, and you will see exactly right now where is the balloon. Okay, and in some moments you will see exactly this position, and I think it's ready, almost ready to launch the balloon. So let me prepare the website just for you. Okay, all of those you are uh, watching at home, bear with us for a moment while we set up the website. Thank you. Uh, Sara, could you send this to the all staff? So, Mr. Maori, there's a co uh, question. Will be, will there be any live camera recording from the balloon that we can't see? So right now we have actually three cameras inside the inside the thermal box, but it's not in real life. So the way is that uh, hopefully next year we will develop a new advanced technology to record in real life uh, the ascending the ascending point. But at the moment we have just the Raspberry Pi, Raspberry Pi camera that is taking pictures, okay? And we have two cameras that they are like uh, GoPro and hopefully we will have these two videos. Okay, thank you.
Y esta, pero de... so, un poquito más de distancia ah, y me quito la cámara. So there's a question. Who came up with this idea? It's brilliant. Okay, this idea it was because uh, last year with the Creator Creator Creators, uh, the Shining Stars. So we open a new phase of space and technology development. And we wanted to explore and invest more in the school because we thought that it was really inspiring to to study, to discover the space. And actually, we were so we had a suggestion from the Everest company. And when they said to to, to really to do this project, it was a big coincidence with, with with our thoughts. So we wanted to do this because of these two things. So thanks to the Everest company and also because of the projects that we we are already doing in the school such as mission to mars moon camp project and all the students that actually they are inspiring us to to develop and to invest more in the space thank you So now we are starting the last final phase of the balloon. Soon we will be launching it. And well, before we launch, I would like to say hello to my family in Russia who are watching me now. Привет, бабушка. And um, also hello to my family, if someone is watching it. Hola, mama, papa, and everyone else. And to all of the parents also watching this, I hope you like it. And, well, I hope you can imagine your kids doing this investigation and experiment, which it's really, really precious, and I have liked it a lot. It's sad that it's going to finish now, but I am really excited. The launch is going to happen in any moment, so be prepared. Thank you. And we have a question. From 1 to 10, how hard was this idea to create? I would say very, 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 very hard. I would say 9, probably. A 9? Yeah, 8, 9, probably. I think, well, I studied a lot of years in the school, and in robotics we did a lot of pro uh, projects. Every year we do some projects. Uh, for example, RoboCat or first day of the week, we go to compete to different with robots or other things. But this year, we decided to do this balloon. And this was the most difficult project I've ever done in the school. Ever. What do you think? Yeah, I, I also, I think the same as Sasha. Really, really complicated project with problems, of course, but we have succeeded in uh, find a solution to all of them. Uh, the important thing is to all work together, work hard, not be lazy, not like, I don't know, standard doing nothing. And like all together, we can achieve something like this, which I, I really like the experience of working with my friends. Like for example, here, Pao. Hi, Pao. Can I say hello to somebody very special? Yes. Wait. Yes. Hello, Adrian. I love you. Oh, yeah. I really miss you. You have to be here. So we have a question related to that. Next year, will younger students also collaborate? We hope to have as many students collaborating as possible. The, the problem has been COVID-19. We, well, yes, like we were not able to all of 
all of the participants, like all of, not all of the years, but year four and year five, be able to come here and watch this, which is really, really sad. But that's why we're doing this live stream, working hard. And well, we hope you like it. Also, a special salute to someone watching the stream. I think you know you, who you are. So. Uh, Big hello to all of St. Peter's. Uh, the balloon and the box are getting ready. We're sticky taping it all, securing it, Mr. Maori, right? Yeah, yeah. Alex, Tenemos una, ¿no? Si tenemos una, ya está. Espera, ¿dónde está tu móvil? Córtala, córtala. No parece. So, ¿Podemos ir así o podemos una mica más capaz? Pues, sí, que acaba dentro. Penseu que... Sí, bueno, Mr. Maury, a burning question. How long is it going to take? Less than five minutes, I promise. <laughs> you can start the countdown. Com funciona això? Escolteu-me, és important. Jo cortaré el cable de seguretat i iré cogiendo el globo i me iré trayendo todo el tren de lanzamiento, como se denomina esto, i lo iremos dejando poco a poco, poco a poco, cogeremos el paracaídas poco a poco i l'últim, que seréis los que estáis con la sonda, me daréis la sonda, la cogeréis vosotros, luego yo me aparto y vosotros la dejáis ir. Subirá recto. ¿Vale? ¿Y eso, eso trigará de 10 segundos? ¿Qué es el countdown? Uh, bueno, aguantamos la sonda, cortamos el de 5, si queréis, o 10, y la cortamos. ¿Vale? ¿Sí? Sí, 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 sí. sí, 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 sí. What? But I need to prepare the drone. No, no, forget the drone, forget the drone. We're Pero os so... una cosa. No, la drone. Força, això... no, no, no. 3,6 kilos de força. Because no, no, no. now we should focus with this, no, and no, if the, no, now the drone... No, 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 no,
Quan comencem el countdown, Òscar? Ara o...? Quan la sonda aquí arribi aquí a les nostres mans, que l'agafaràs tu al final o els alumnes que vulgueu, feu el countdown, vale? Vale. Tardio, corda de seguretat. Corda de seguretat fora. Veniu cap a mi ara, aneu caminant. A poc a poc... Tranquil, tranquil, tranquil. Venid todos si queréis, lo hacemos entre todos. Vale. Coged de las cuerdas. Esto está bien sujeto. Venga, venid para mí. La idea, cuidado, la idea es la idea es que acompañéis la sonda. Venga, comenzar a contar. Are we ready? We're going to start the countdown. Venga, ya. Comenzar a contar, ya. Ready? Ten. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and we have liftoff. Bueno, antenas, telemetría, va, 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 va. Ahora se cae, vamos chicos. How are you feeling, boys, to see the balloon go up into the sky? Excited. 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 Se cae. Sí, sí. Mr. Maori, how are you feeling to see your baby go? Wow, it's I don't know how to describe it, but it's like to have your little baby flying, you know? Is and there is a lot of uncertainty because people think that it's going to work, like when you press a button on your smartphone, but actually it's more likely to fail than to work. But hopefully, hopefully. Uh, we will now uh, retrieve the balloon. So just uh, just check the website, just check the balloon with us, and try, try to see the difference between the prediction and to the real position. So more or less count, one hour and a half, and yeah, and let's see where it goes. Hopefully uh, in a place that we can, we, we don't need to, to, to play. Or yeah, so finger crossed, where, fingers crossed we can retrieve the balloon. Boys, can you tell the audience what is the next step? Uh, Ivar, you know it. Uh, well, I know it. Are we using the GPS for yes. something? Now we have to... Well, as I nearly said, yes. to track the balloon. Well, now we are going to get the antenna, put it in the car, and we are going to follow the balloon a bit and predict where it will land. And then we will collect it and see the data. Yes, excellent. So, uh, Mr. Maori sent the link to all the teachers, so you can see uh, where it will land. But now we'll try to put it in the chat as well here in YouTube, so you can follow it by yourself. So we're working on putting it in the yes. chat for all of those who are not teachers at St. Peter's, so you can follow along as well if you wish to.
So right now we're having technical difficulties with sending well, the website to you to see where the balloon goes. We will try to put it in the chat later on. We will try it. And well, I hope you have liked it. Uh, the balloon is really up. Like, it cannot be seen, I think. It's a white speck in the sky. I don't know yes. if the camera is able to see it. You have something to say? Well, hopefully you all enjoyed. Thank you for watching. And well, the younger uh, boys and girls, maybe you will do this experiment when you grow up and make it even better. And we would like to say thank you very much and goodbye. We will take this opportunity to sign off. Thank you, everyone, for watching. And we hope, we hope you will join us next year in the space program again. Thank you. See you later. Did you do?